This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And apparently this one does not power on at all. So this build is a bit of a mixed bag in terms of presentation. Not that that really matters in the grand scheme of things with the system not powering on at all. I mean, it's just one massive paperweight, so who cares about how it looks? But there are some components in here that look to be a bit older or at least a bit dirtier. We're missing one of the fans for the 240mm radiator up top. I just noticed that. That's, um, that's a big no-no. And there are a couple other fans that are very, very dirty. Um, but then we've got, you know, like this EVGA RTX 3060 Ti 4, the Win 3 here, this looks to be pretty clean. And obviously these are very difficult to get a hold of, especially for a decent price in this current market. So it's possible that as this viewer was changing things out, looks like maybe he upgraded the graphics card. He might've miswired something. This could come down to user error. And if that's the case, should be an easy fix, but it could be something much worse. If you're not getting power at all, not only could it be a potential miswiring or a failure to wire something up, but it could also be something much more expensive, like a power supply, could be a short on the motherboard, could be a number of things. We're gonna find out what exactly it is in this video. Stay with me. Mercury by Stream Elements is a dynamic tool for YouTube that'll help you better engage your audience. So you've got tools like dynamic video descriptions where you can add polls, recent subs, and member alerts. But the real kicker is that they update in real time. So that's an extra layer of interaction between your audience and an otherwise static and rather boring video description. You've also got tools like Shoutout Studio, which allows users to create gorgeous shoutout videos for fans of the channel in only a few minutes. They've also integrated Patreon for those who use it. And if you're into tipping, there's even a tool for that. Mercury also includes super useful charts and metrics for content creators to better gauge video interest with a much cleaner and easier to use layout than vanilla YouTube analytics, if you ask me. You can track subscriber growth and member growth as well as direct engagement with the comment section and like button. It's something I think every serious YouTuber, big or small, should consider as a means to more readily interact with fans. But don't just take my word for it. Check out Mercury by Stream Elements for free. That's right, it doesn't cost a dime via our sponsor link in the video description below. So for those who are new to the Fix or Flop playlist, the goal here is simple. We attempt to fix owner systems in and around the Orlando, Florida area, but the caveat is we do it for free. We don't charge them a dime so long as they're okay with us taking on their systems for a few days at the most. Usually it doesn't take longer than a day or two. Uh, and also so long as they're okay with us filming the process. We can monetize these videos, so that's where I make my money, right? I don't need to roll over any of that cost to the owners. And at the same time, they're also being gracious enough to allow me to film with their systems for a few days. So I think it's a worthy exchange. So we're gonna need to move one of these fans definitely back up to the top radiator here because it doesn't make sense to have just one uh, when you have all the space for another. Other cooling performance will be drastically affected by that. Ask me how I know we've ran those tests just because we're kind of crazy. Uh, there are a few cable management concerns I want to take care of, but all that needs to come after we figure out what's wrong with the system. So with all that out of the way, let's begin the troubleshooting process by attempting the power of the system on. Now this shouldn't work according to the owner, but we need to try this anyway. We need to make sure that what the owner is describing as a symptom is what we can actually replicate here in the studio. Because if we get something else showing up, maybe the system powers on, but we get no picture out, that's a different issue than what was described. So it's possible something else might've happened in the transportation process in between the viewer dropping it off and me bringing it to the office or what have you. So we need to narrow that down first. So with everything plugged in, we can flip the switch at the rear, the power supply. Let's push the power button. Uh, everything turns on. I don't know why the last two episodes, I feel like people have told me that their systems refuse to power on at all, but this is definitely on. And it looks like it should be posting. But I have a pretty good feeling that's not gonna happen. That's why it's here. Now I've checked all vital connections, eight pin EPS, 24 pin, the two eight pins, supplemental PCIe power. Uh, all of that looks good. We'll check on the power supply side here in a second, but I do wanna do one quick thing, only because this has come up in previous episodes. You gotta clear the CMOS. It takes two seconds. You should do it just to rule out the possibility of it being something very simple. And in this case, it very well could come down to clearing the CMOS because it looks like everything's functioning. We're just not getting a picture out. So in order to do that, We've got the system, let's see, system is on. Well, at least the power at the rear is. Now we're gonna flip the switch off and we're just gonna hold these two pins together. We're gonna jump them with a screwdriver and there we go. Should be good now. Let's try powering on this time, seeing if we get a picture. A few moments later. That's so weird. Everything looks like it's working. 
Still no picture out. These fans take a while to kick in. I think they're being controlled by a Commander Pro or something at the back. But no picture out is no picture out. That's no good. This builds otherwise a paperweight, so we need to figure out what is causing that. Now notice this motherboard doesn't have a Dr. Debug screen or really any LED that I can find that indicates the status of the system or individual components. So I connected a speaker here uh, to the speaker port at the bottom of the board and I'm still not getting anything. So I don't think this motherboard knows that something's wrong and that's just gonna complicate the process a bit more. So at this point, since we're not getting any other indication from the motherboard or elsewhere that anything is wrong and we're also not getting picture out, I'm gonna start narrowing my focus in first on the graphics card. We're gonna try a different card first and then we'll try a different slot and see if we can narrow it down between either this being a card issue, which would be pretty awful uh, or a motherboard issue in the sense that maybe we're not getting a proper, uh, maybe there's some software conflict between the card that's connected and the PCI generation that's running or something like that. I've seen that before. Uh, so we need to narrow that down. What we're gonna do is swap this uh, 3060 Ti with a good old GT710. Out goes one and in goes another. Here we go. And now we're gonna give it another go with the GT710 installed. Let's connect the HDMI cable here at the rear. If this works, then that, uh, I'm afraid, is very bad news for his 3060 Ti, but we'll do a bit more digging. So, power on. Oh, well, I keep forgetting that I haven't connected the power cable. Alrighty. What do we have here? Kind of hoping this doesn't work, for the sake of the viewer, because um, you never want to hear that the most expensive component in your build is the thing that's preventing your build from actually functioning. Uh, but I don't think this is fixing it, which means this this is a uh, huh. It's kind of weird. I wonder if he's got an incompatible BIOS. But it's a B550 motherboard, so we need to see what kind of CPU's got in here because I'm not actually sure. This is a Ryzen 5. 3600, okay, so there's really no reason why this CPU shouldn't be working natively with the B550 board that's in here. Um, as far as I know, there's no BIOS that would eliminate Zen 2 support. Uh, so, I mean, I guess while we have the CPU out, we should just go ahead and swap it with one that we know works, just to, just to rule it out, but I don't think the CPU itself is bad. So I've got my own Ryzen 5 3600 here. I know this one works, I've just tested it, and we're gonna swap this one in. Wow, no way. <laughs> No, it's a dead CPU? I really didn't see that coming. This happens so rarely. Maybe uh, maybe we're missing a few pins or something. Let's take a closer look. I'm not seeing anything obvious here with the pins at the back of the CPU. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna get a side shot. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of all over the place, but uh, every pin is where it should be. No bent pins, no missing pins. It's very rare that a CPU is the first thing to die. Usually it's the motherboard of the power supply because this just kind of sits in there. So unless it's overvolted or something crazy, um, yeah, it won't be the first thing to go. By the way, the only reason this screen is showing with the new CPU that I put in there uh, is because I disconnected all the SATA drives. I really unplugged everything except for the 24 pin, the eight pin, and then I think there's a couple SATA connections still at the back of the system, but uh, otherwise, yeah, that's why. I can't find a drive because I disconnected them. And with his graphics card back in the rig, that's a 3060 Ti, remember, we're still getting a picture. So that tells me that the graphics card is not at fault for what we were seeing earlier. I, I'm obviously I think it's the CPU because the only thing we changed was the chip apart from uh, disconnecting a few things that are really not pertinent to a post. So what we're gonna do next is attempt to get a post with his old CPU in a platform that I know works. So we're gonna try another B550 motherboard if I have one. I might have a B450 board, but it should have an updated BIOS. So this setup here is pretty primitive, but I know everything works. This B450 board uh, does have an updated BIOS. We'll confirm that. We'll run with a 3600X here in a second. Uh, I've got a single stick of DDR4 that I know works, and we've got that GT710 uh, that we just used in his rig. Uh, I've got a little cooler attached and uh, just a 450 watt power supply, the one, actually the one that I always use as well in the Fixer Fault playlist. It's good to be consistent. You always want to be consistent because there are really no surprises. There shouldn't be any surprises if you're using the same components over and over uh, with which to troubleshoot. So let's power this thing on and see if we get a post. Flip the switch at the rear and let's see, power pins. Here we go. Power it on. We got the one fan that does tell us that it's on. We also have RGBs as well on the right side of the board. So, 
It's turned on, but uh, are we gonna get a post? That's, that's the big question. If we do get a post, then it's possible he might have just like, I don't know, improperly seated the CPU. Very rare, very hard to do with AM4, but um, I'm sure it's happened a few times. I don't feel like we're gonna get a post though. I, I think his, his CPU is, is bricked. And it could have been from a number of things. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so the CPU is not dead. All right, that caught me off guard. Uh, so let's go ahead and swap it back in. Yeah, like I was just saying, I guess it could come down to mounting pressure. Uh, maybe the way that the AIO block was installed, maybe there was just too much pressure on one side of the CPU, maybe there was more pressure on the bottom side, so some of the top pins weren't making contact, right, with the socket itself. Um, that could be one of the reasons why we weren't getting a post before and why the motherboard was kind of tripping out, not really knowing what to do. So, uh, all right, let's, we don't even need to test the 3600X I have here. Let's go ahead and swap his 3600 back into his rig. Literally the only thing I am changing in this process is the CPU. I am not touching anything else. I want to be sure that we can get this working with his original chip. So we'll remove mine. We'll reinsert his. It's kind of weird doing this sideways. And then uh, we'll get some fresh thermal paste for him. So let's give it a shot. Jump the pins. And cross our fingers. I have no reason to doubt that this will work now. Especially since we just confirmed that it worked in another, blur, another board, another platform. So uh, I'm hoping, I'm gonna be so confused if we don't get one. Come on, give me a post. Give me a post. 2,000 years later. There's no way, I, do, I, I don't understand this at all. Identical CPUs, identical. They're both 3600s. One of them posts with this board and one of them doesn't. But both of them post on a different board. This is so weird. I've never seen this before. I don't, I don't know what else to say. So I tried a few things off camera just in a desperate attempt to understand why the heck we're getting a post with one 3600 but not another yet both 3600s have been confirmed working in yet another B450 board. So I have no idea what's going on here. I tried multiple BIOSes. I used the QFlash Plus function at the back of this board. This is a B550 Elite uh, Gigabyte Aorus board. And uh, none of those BIOSes I tried worked. So uh, yeah, that's not the solution. Eureka, I figured it out. And this took some uh, tinkering off camera. I wish I had filmed it all live because my reactions I'm sure would, would have been priceless. Uh, so my 3600 is in his rig and it works just fine, right? We get we post and we get to the, the Windows loading screen and that's great. So this system for all intents and purposes is, is fixed, but we still need to take care of cable management because it's, it's pretty bad. And we will give it a light cleaning as well because some of these components are rather dusty. Now, as for his CPU, I was still struggling to understand why we were getting a post with my 3600, but not with his. And I realized that there was one other variable I was forgetting. So if you notice in his rig, he has two DDR4 modules spaced out appropriately to run in dual channel. Slots A2 and B2, your two channels are A and B. Ryzen supports dual channels, at least these desktop SKUs do, and that's recommended for Ryzen. But in my, uh, yeah, in my test rig, I only had a single DDR4 module installed, and I did this just to keep things simple, but this means that the CPU is only operating off of a single channel of memory. That is not, again, optimal for this platform, but I didn't really think about the fact that that is a pretty substantial difference between this test rig and his. Now, you're thinking, okay, well, Greg, what, what does it really matter? I mean, you know, like at the end of the day, it's just DDR4. Well, what matters is the fact that the channels are controlled by the CPU. So in this config here with a single DIMM in slot A2, you can see that his 3600 posts. No problems at all, we're in the BIOS now, and I'm assuming that if we had an operating system installed on a drive and that was connected to the board, we could boot into the operating system without a hitch. The only downside is that we're not running dual channel, which obviously benefits, especially Ryzen in this case. But I'm gonna keep the camera running, and all I'm gonna do is turn the system off. I'm gonna drain the power just to be on the safe side. Okay, and then we're gonna swap this module from slot A2 to slot B2. Now I'm not adding an extra DIMM, we're just sticking with a single module here. I'm just changing 
where it is connected to the CPU or how it's connected to the CPU. So instead of the A channel, we're connected to the CPU via the B channel. We're gonna turn the system back on. Nothing, nothing's coming up. In fact, the CPU in this case, the CPU fan is not spinning. This is a slightly different behavior than what we were experiencing in his rig, but we get nothing. He has, his 3600 here has a dead memory channel. That's why it wasn't posting in his rig, but it was posting here because I only had a single stick and it just happened to be installed into the channel that was still functioning. So regardless of the type of DDR4 module used, whether it be a fast kit with tight timings or a slow kit with pretty loose timings, it's gonna come down to where the memory is installed. I could put one module here in slot A2, and then I could put another module in slot A1. This is kind of cringy, sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. So I can put another module here, squeeze it in there. There we go. Right, so now we still have, well in this case it'd be 32 gigs of DDR4, 16 a piece, and the system would post. I'll show you that right now. And there we go, so that's 32 gigs now. So we're, we're actually detecting both dims, the system is posting, but we can't, again, utilize channel B. So the moment we put any module in either of the B channels, so the two rightmost slots, the system is toast. It will not turn on, or it will turn on, but it won't post uh, because I believe the channel, that, that B channel in the 3600 here is dead. So with that fiasco out of the way, I'm still kind of caught off guard by the fact that a random memory channel died in a Ryzen 5 3600. I've only seen that one other time personally. That was in an Intel CPU. That is, um, that's very unfortunate, but at the end of the day, you could have still used the CPU. If you had just moved one of these modules over uh, out of the B channel, then your system would have been fully functional again. Apart from maybe a small FPS drop, uh, I, I think that in day-to-day -day tasks, you wouldn't have noticed much of a performance hit at all. Ryzen, though, is more sensitive to those kinds of things. All we need to do now is clean out the cable management because it's pretty, um, it's pretty bad. We need to fix the AIO positioning as well. I think we're gonna have to move the radiator to the front because I realized later that uh, he couldn't add a second fan because it's being impeded by his memory kit. So we're gonna move this to the front, swap some things around, and then we'll clean it up uh, just a bit. We're not gonna deep clean it, but we'll clean it up, um, you know, to make it look better than it does now. And then uh, we'll be good to go. Here we go. And well, here we are. A much cleaner system, and perhaps more importantly, a fully functioning system again. We replaced his 3600 with one that uh, doesn't have a dead memory channel, and everything is back to working order. So that's uh, that's good news. I, I, we actually took care of a lot in this video. We figured out more specifically what was wrong with his CPU. Uh, very rare that this stuff happens, but it does happen, and you should be aware of uh, the signs and symptoms, how to test for it if you happen to run into a similar scenario. And that's ultimately the goal of this playlist, not only to help viewers in and around the Orlando, Florida area, but also to educate those who might be in similar boats as this viewer. The build is looking so much cleaner now. It was not deep clean, but you can see I was, you know, I gave it a pretty thorough scrub outside. We relocated his radiator to the front, and the pump is still sufficiently below the barb, so I'm not worried about air uh, making its way into the pump over time. 
fine. Might hear a little bit of gargle, uh, but I think that this cooler uh, from Corsair has been filled appropriately, so uh, I don't expect that there'll be long-term uh, functional issues with this AIO. I always get people complaining about that. They see they see one video and then they take it totally out of context or they misinterpret what the creator says. And uh, we have a video that straightens a lot of that out in the video description if you wanna check it out. Now it's time to email the owner and tell them the good news. If you guys have uh, friends or family members or maybe yourself, maybe you have uh, a system that is not working anymore and it appears like it's a hardware issue, especially uh, send me an email. It's greg at salazarstudios.org. It's also in the video description. Uh, send some photos of your rig, the specs of your rig, and tell me uh, in a detailed fashion what is going on, and uh, I will see if I can fix it. You have to be local though. Don't try to ship me your system or any of that stuff. You need to be local. I don't deal with shipping. I don't want to touch it because I've been burned more than once, and I don't want to get caught up in a logistical fiasco with FedEx or UPS or whoever you happen to send it with, and maybe I send it back to you and it's destroyed, but you didn't want insurance, but you're still accusing me of, you know, it's just like it's a, it's, it's a mess. So I hope you you enjoyed this fixer flop episode we only have a few more this season then we're gonna start stockpiling for season two but uh, look hopefully you learned something from this one and if you didn't maybe you were at least entertained and if so mission accomplished if you want to leave a comment down below i would appreciate that if you are not subscribed get subscribed i'll give you a few seconds you click the subscribe button i appreciate that thank you and uh leave a like or dislike depending on how you felt my name is greg thanks for troubleshooting with me